What was the, Man. what made you commit? What made you commit? Yeah, well, I was in that nine to five grind, right? Like, uh, just like most people, you're kind of trying to get out of that rat race. I mean, there's only so, so high you can go up in that. And uh, I just wasn't comfortable with what a nine to five offers, right? And so we, my brother and I were just like, dude, like this e-com stuff is blowing up. Like, what is this? And why is this Maxim Trubisky guy all over my Instagram, right? And so finally I was like, you know what? Let's hop on a call. Let's see what we can do. And I mean, now here we are today. So, so what was like the, the main like challenge you'd say before you just committed? Like what was like the, the number, number one thing you'd say you were going through? I felt stuck, man. Like I, for the longest time, I kept saying at my next promotion, I'll be happy. I'll have more money. I'll have more time. And every time I got promoted, I'm like, well, shoot. Like I, I still don't have that gratification. I still don't have the freedom or the value that I can provide the world. And I just, I just stuck, man. I couldn't get out of it. So it just finally clicked, right? It did. It took forever. I was just like, because that's the thing, right, is a lot of people will be posting the cars and, or the vacations and stuff like that. And, like, yeah, that's exciting to see, mm -hmm. but it was the freedom of them doing it. Yeah, I remember that, that time so distinctly, to be honest. Just that, that 2019, right? That's, mm -hmm. we, got, we got a screenshot right here that we had the team pull up for you, which is going to show you what you posted in the group exactly, <laughs> nice. exactly two years ago, I'd yeah. say. Oh, let's go, man. Had an awesome Black Friday week. Thanks for the help, Max. Excited to keep scaling. Made $1,200 in a week. <laughs> I was so pumped, man. I was like, dude, we, we finally got something that... Was that your first like $1,200 online? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had tried a couple of things before, um, and that's when we kind of started working with you. And I, and I don't know if you remember this, but I had tried working with somebody else before that. We did some stuff, and like, the communication was so bad, right? And it was so hard to get a hold of him, and there wasn't like the hand holding. And I get that, right? Like, you, you can't really have too much of the hand holding. You had to like be proactive. But this was seriously such a new territory for me. I had no idea what we were doing. And so for us, not only were the videos so spot on, like, but it was like every week, like we were constantly on Zoom meetings, you know, and like talking on the phone, like how can we get to the next level? And then, dude, when that, that first like thousand dollar week came through, I was so lit. I was like, wow, like we're like on our way, man. Just after, after that first $1,200 in sales, you made it, sales were happening, uh, customers are purchasing. You probably went through a lot of mind, mind shifts at the time that were, you know, a lot of new things for you. Maybe you didn't see it in, in school before. Maybe it wasn't exposed to you in the system. And you, you kind of started transforming. Would you say that you became like a, a, a different person? Would you say that you, it was easier for you to start doing sales online? Like what, what was the, the steps after you started? Yeah, I think um, everything happens in waves. Um, there's cycles into online sales. Uh, because those were extremely high times, and, but that was holiday season. So the highs came with a lot of lows. <laughs> so really, failure has been the best coach, right? Because um, you, you learn from those mistakes, right? And I think um, the biggest mistake is not learning from your mistakes. And so I'm actually glad that that happened because it kind of helped give you some of that backbone, some of that discipline on going back to the fundamentals and learning your strategy, learning how to go find products or services to sell and kind of scale them from there. So what would you say is the number one thing that you think someone needs to know to, to sell a product or service online? Like what's the, the real transformation? It's dude, it's 100% mindset, right? 100%. Um, imagination is what took us right from me driving my Ford Focus to a Lamborghini Urus. It was all imagination. I knew what I was gonna accomplish, but then my why, right? I didn't wanna get into this so I could have the watches, the cars, and this, that, and the other. I got into it, again, like I said, for the time freedom and be able to do what I want when I want. And so when you're in those lows, your why has to be bigger than your problems. That, that's, it's kind of crazy for me to think about because it's like some people have a why and it takes them to like a level Right. For, for you, you were, let's say, 
you know, at, at the nine to five and you, you stuck through with your why and you wrote it with the highs and the lows, right. with, with the aggre aggregated, you know, average of mean, like where there's highs and, and there's lows and you wrote it all the way to the top and you stuck with the same why. Tell me what, what was the greatest achievement that you were, you were able to accomplish since joining the program? Um, I went, there's two of them. The first one I got, I went to Target and I got a, a postcard that said, sorry for your loss. And I gave my boss my two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. Cause I knew what I was about. And I'm like, you just lost a great asset and I'm out of here, right? That was a big moment for me. And then uh, the, big, the second one was I typed up this very fancy email and I was super pumped about bringing somebody on board to kind of help me continue to grow and to scale. And I sent my wife an offer letter and said, quit your job and come work with me and I'd love to have you. At Freedom, right? I don't need to rely on anybody else anymore for work and money and protection, all these things, right? Like we drum it up ourselves now. It's, it's so easy to not live a free life, you'd say, right? Right. <laughs> it's like, there's, there's the conscious freedom, mm -hmm. there's the financial freedom, which is probably what you've noticed about myself. Like, I, I was 17 at the time when you, when you got my program. Oh my gosh. And I was just, you know, I was supposed to be in high school, but I, I, right. was, I was in Paris. <laughs> I, I, remember, I, remember, I remember that, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, was in, I was taking the, the Zoom calls that you, yep. you mentioned. I was taking them in Paris. And then me and my other 17 year old buddy, my best friend, we were taking the train to, to London and we were just like running the program out of there. And it was such a beautiful time because it was like, luckily I was able to, to recognize what was happening out there in the world. Right. And before that happened, I was able to recognize that I didn't have any freedom. That for me, like I, I wanted freedom more than anything in the world. Maybe that was just the way I was brought up. And I, I was brought up on like the, the Braveheart movies, you know, where they scream freedom, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so as soon as like, I was in ninth grade and I looked at the, the, the system ahead of me and I was, I'm a very impatient guy. I'm like literally like, and I'm like, okay, like I, I want that financial freedom first. So then I put my mind to it. But then I didn't realize that there's also this, this level of conscious freedom that, that we get. And that's actually like the, where most people are, are hooked in for, for life. They have this, this dependency on uh, a lot of these different social bonds, these social norms. They either, you know, are gonna be scared to take an action because their friends are gonna laugh at them or something like that, or, or they're gonna look stupid to fail. And that just keeps them stuck in, in, that, in, in that mode of lifestyle of never actually having a, at least freedom of your own brain and they're stuck in the, their entire life. Their entire life is wasted. They go, they go through the entire thing. I think a lot of people err on the side of comfort. Um, when you are working like in a nine to five, you have a, ver like a, a scarcity mindset. You're not thinking of abundance. You don't think about growth. You think like, I need to save up this money because if I spend any of it, I work so hard for it. And you start thinking, buying that watch is going to cost me three weeks of work, right? You see what I'm saying? You start thinking in scarcity and you're running out of money. And so when you think of investing into a program or into knowledge, you're not thinking of the upside possibilities. You're thinking of what you could lose, right? And so I think for me, it was at that point. We, dude, I can't remember. It was like something like 2,000 bucks, right, for, to get everything rolling. And we maybe, maybe had like three grand in the bank, four grand in the bank. So I was like, I'm not going to let money dictate my actions or my future. Like there's no way, I, like that cannot stand in the way of my success. And so I always tell people, you know, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Like what, what is on the other side of discomfort that, that you're missing out on? And so uh, just threw it on the credit card. I'm like, I'm a, like, I got no choice. Like, I'm going to make that money back or I, like, I'm a toast. And so we just made it happen. I just pulled the trigger and you just sent it, you know, and just like made it happen. Yeah. yeah. It's like you got to you got to burn the ships to take that. Yeah, island, exactly. Right? Oh, my gosh. See, and I think that's what's different is I kind of grew up in like in the sport world. Right. And um, and there's just so much that you with that Kobe, like that Mamba mentality. Right. And like what you just said, burn the ships. Like 
I love like that Polynesian culture. Like you go island to island, you burn your ships, or you're like in 300, like you come back, you know, with your shield or on it, right? You're not a coward. Like you're going to go and fight until it's over. And it's not until you lose, it's, it's until you win. Like failure is not an option. And you do whatever it takes to make that happen. It's like there, there's these like specific breeds, like you said, like in, in this world that, that feel like that. They, yeah. they, like I'm the same exact way. Like for me, it's, it's like when it's like my family versus like, you know, versus like them potentially not living the life that they deserve, right? Just because the system is doing them wrong, just because they came over here, right? From, from a different country yeah. in like the name of like freedom, right? This country is supposedly built on freedom, right? right? And they have these beautiful skills, like, like painting and piano, right? That's, that's what my p parents are, they're, they're artists. And like the society tells them that, no, you're, you're, you're not gonna make this much money because you know, we say so, because we don't value these skills, because we're gonna do everything in our power to make it hard for you to take all your money away from you. And whether we know it or not, actually like 40 to 50% of all the money people make goes to billionaires that already have money. So it's like, are we gonna just sit down and like just lay down and play dead like a dog, you know? And just let them do this to us? It's like anger, like right. I feel like anger and like power comes from it. It's like the, the greatest minds of our history, civilization, like the warriors, the conquerors, like Alexander the Great, Bonaparte, Napoleon. Um, they were conquerors, they were warriors, because it's like they're, they're fighting for, for their country, they're fighting for their people. And I feel like if you're in the position, right, which so many, like 98% of the entire world is in the position, right? And my, my family, they came over here just so they could give, give me this opportunity, whether they knew it or not. When you're in the position to, you know, to potentially take everything you, you could possibly want, give yourself the gift of everything you've ever wanted, just because you love yourself, you love your family, you gotta take it, it's a given. Not everyone understands that. Sometimes they gotta go to very low lows for, for, for it to finally hit them. But to transition from like the, the illusion lifestyle of like these, these invisible chains that we do have on us, which do keep us in, let's say, paralysis, and to transition out of that into, into a mode of doing, into a mode of action, into a mode of knowledge, which is like, we, we know ourselves how quickly, like if you just expose yourself to action, how quickly it changes your life, how quickly it makes things easier. For me, the way I always looked at it, and like the more I just like learned from the greatest minds, the more, um, you know, I worked with like my mentors in Switzerland, like the more it just, it, to me, it was like an obvious one, right? When you want something in life, like it's, if you're thinking in the, in the mode of, like scarcity, like you said, if you're thinking in, in, in a negative mode of like, I, I don't want this anymore, I don't want the, the nine to five anymore, right? And you're just kind of thinking in a negative way, it's gonna kind of attract more negativity. Right. But if you have another option, if there's another alternative, which directly replaces this, all, all this, like these, I don't even know what to describe, this, this horrible, you know, world that, that we're literally thrown into and these, these chains that are put on us right away, it's like, if you just follow that option and you embrace that new option, like instantly, like right away, it's like, you, you, you could forget about the old world. You can move on and you can embrace this, this new ability to, to do, right? Just because there's no way you can replace a habit if there's not a replacement for it. So for us, we're lucky that there is so many different like alternatives for us to, to go on to. And the number one, alternative I'd say would be is the online world, right. right? It's like, what do you, like, you're not gonna march your way through the country to, to like find a, a better opportunity for yourself. You jumped online and you saw this vast potential, this limitless potential of like, whoa, if I just trigger a couple things in someone's brain, right? And they make the right buying decision psychologically, scientifically on a consistent basis, I'm gonna start getting the cha-chings from right. my phone. Right. And you understand that, okay, so let me do this, right? right. And that's, that's what I'd say you started doing. You, you, probably, you embrace the option, you embrace the alternative path to. Well, yeah, I mean, totally, because fear is so irrational, right? Like, 
we have so many limiting beliefs thinking, I'm not smart enough. This guy did it. He's unique. This can never happen to me, right? Like, there's just a lot of things that we put a limit on. Even, for example, it's like, my goal is to make a million dollars this year. Why, is, why are you limited to only a million? Like, why are we putting the, all these ceilings on that shouldn't be there? If you're in business to make money, you're going to fail and you don't understand business because entrepreneurs, much like you said, right, your, your parents are artists. Like when you get into business and you go to share your craft or like your talent, it's to bless the world, not to make yourself money. My thing has always been the time freedom, the value, the impact, you know, and that power. And so now when I was seeking those things, I was seeking value, money just came because there's opportunities to provide, provide value. Like we're here today because of that. I wasn't seeking money. I'm seeking an opportunity to have a platform to help people and money was just a byproduct of all of it. It, it can really, like whether people know it or not, like uh, maybe like even on an energy basis, mm -hmm. right? If people only care about the money, like they could get it, they could make some money if that's what they really wanted to. But I feel like personally with like the other, let's say even coaches out there, with the other mentors out there, you kind of see that they're like the, the ones that are just gonna want the money and only the money that you could see right through it, right? Yeah, you could see through, so through the, the government, like how, they're only, how they only want money, how they only are, you know, paying everybody off and paying off the media and doing everything they can just to get more money. You could see when something is corrupt and when something is just, you know, founded on money. But when there's, when there's, high, when there's higher ideals, right? When there's like impact involved, right? It's sometimes people don't have the confidence to, to share that, right? They don't have the confidence to, to share their ideals with the world and put some of their, their soul into, let's say, like a business, right? Which, which is instead of you just, let's say, doing something purely for the money, like what we do at mentorships.com is we help people take what they already know, take their experience, take their culture, and they put it into a new business, which they can be proud of. And if, if you approach it from that point of view, and some people, it doesn't always hit with them. They're like looking at the numbers, they get stuck into this hamster wheel, they start getting you know, the shiny object syndrome of, oh, this isn't making me money, I, I must go and look for more money. And it, it can eat them alive, and it, it's gonna keep them stuck where they are just because they're, you know, they got, they, they had this like, uh, the lie of money, like thrown on them, right? They didn't understand money from day one. They weren't able to get money. And once you reach a certain point, money can also destroy you, right? For, for, for me, I, I had a point in my life where money was everything. And it was one of the worst times of my life, right? Just because I lost all of my, I lost my why. That's why for me to look at your story, it's so like literally, like I said it to you on the phone when I just talked to you. For me, it's like a, it's like a happy feeling like right here because you, like I saw you just start from absolutely zero mm -hmm. and you stuck with it. You stuck with the right ideals you, the, the entire time. And it's like, there's, there could have been a million distractions that could have pulled you away. I was you know, hit with some distractions and like, you know, there's, there's no limit to where you can go with that.